After all, haven't navigators, geographers, and map makers mapped these areas? And shouldn't they have noticed this quirk by now? If the earth is indeed flat? Well, the reality is, the rabbit hole just gets deeper from here. So, to begin, the distance between Sydney, Australia and Nelson, New Zealand on the ball earth, given their coordinates and sparing you the spherical trigonometry, should be 1,310 miles. But the Australian Handbook, Almanac, Shippers and Importers Directory states the measured distance as being 1,550 miles, which is a full 18% longer. And while on the ball earth model, Antarctica is said to be a continent of ice situated at the bottom of the ball from 78 degrees south latitude, it should therefore not have a perimeter greater than 12,000 miles. However, early explorers like Captain Cook and James Clark Ross, in attempting to circumnavigate Antarctica, took three to four years to do so, and clocked in the distance traveled at 50 to 60,000 miles. That's twice the circumference of the equator. But the real proof for the flat earth map is in the flight paths. On the ball earth, several flights would have their shortest, quickest, and straightest path over or around the Antarctic continent. But instead, these flights take all manner of tangential detours, crossing into the northern hemisphere to refuel. Their reason? Antarctica's too cold, they claim. Well, I'm not buying it. When they claim there are bases with working machinery set up all over Antarctica. So let's just take a look at the actual flight paths and see what they have to disclose. One flight that should be a simple 11 hour shot across the Indian Ocean is from Johannesburg, South Africa to Perth, Australia. However, this flight takes a detour north, stopping in either Dubai, Hong Kong or Malaysia to refuel, for a total flight time averaging over 18 hours. This ridiculously wayward detour is frustrating to say the least, but on the flat earth map starts to make sense. Another quick and easy flight, you would think, is from Johannesburg to Santiago, Chile. While an easy 12-hour flight below the Tropic of Capricorn is to be expected, instead every flight crosses the equator to refuel in Senegal, all the way near the Tropic of Cancer, for a total flight time of 19 hours. Though it doesn't make sense on the globe, as you can see it fits perfectly on the flat earth map. A third flight from Johannesburg is to Sao Paulo, Brazil, which should be a direct 10-hour flight across the 25th degree south latitude. But instead, every flight crosses into the north to stop in London to refuel, making the total flight time 24 hours. From Santiago, Chile to Sydney, Australia, a straight 15-hour flight across the South Pacific is expected. Despite refueling options in either New Zealand or any island in the South Pacific, the flight stops all the way at Los Angeles to refuel before continuing south to its destination. As already stated, these detours make no sense on the globe, but are explained and work perfectly well on the flat earth map, having the North Pole at the center. So investigate the subject for yourself and ask 